Welcome to Rhodey and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and with us today we have two special guests. We have Max Copenhagen and Pat McCollum from the Rotary Club of Camarillo. They're going to talk to us today about what we call a GSE, and you'll find out about that shortly. With that, Pat, welcome, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I am the daughter, second daughter, of uh, immigrants, and I live in Camarillo, obviously. I am a graphic designer and trade show manager. My husband and I uh, own an auto repair shop also in Camarillo, and um, <laughs> that's it. That's life in a nutshell. Great. How did you get involved with Rotary? Where did that come in to your life? You know what? I started uh, marketing our business, uh, the auto repair business, quite a lot and joined the chamber thing, and I kept hearing about different service organizations, specifically Rotary, and so I kind of looked at all of them one time and thought, I'm, I'm going to go check it out, and got there and never left. <laughs> great. What well, year was that? Do you remember when you joined? Uh, it'll be six years in a six couple years. months. Okay, yeah. great. Max, and welcome to you, too. Tell Thank us a little you. bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in Southern California, down in Orange County, and I went to the University of California, studied forestry, and worked in forestry my, my whole career, retired actually retired just in time to go on my GSE trip <laughs> because it is very time consuming. Um, and I, I became a member of Rotary in 2003. Okay. Um, and what, drove, what brought you into uh, Rotary? Well, there's what brings you into Rotary and, and then why you stay. I came in because at that point in my career, I, I felt uh, I wanted to get more involved in the community and I felt like a real player in the business I was in. Uh, but the reason I stayed was I went on a project down in Mexico and just, just loved the little project we had in Baja, California for the weekend and, and, and discovered the international part of Rotary. Now, what is uh, GSE? What does that stand for? It stands for Group Study Exchange. So it's a, it's a vocational exchange uh, where a team from one country, in my case Thailand, came to California for about a month. And we went to Thailand for about a month, a year later. So it's a vocational exchange where we, uh, we share hospitality. So we're building friendship, fellowship, and uh, sharing hospitality with people in another country and uh, strengthening Rotary and international relations, frankly. Great. Is that kind of what you uh, got out of the group study exchange, Pat? Same yeah, same that and cultural. It was vocational definitely for us, but cultural. I mean, I went to Sri Lanka and definitely a different culture <laughs> than California. <laughs> Very unique. Had you ever been to Sri Lanka before? No, no, time? I've never been to an Asian country. Oh, really? So, so that it was quite an experience for it you. Was, oh, it was. It was. Outstanding. We have some pictures that we want to share. Um, these pictures, pretty good set we have. We're going to start off with the first picture, and that is a picture of Max, you and your, your wife there. Uh, this picture was taken, I believe, during uh, your president year, the year uh, I was governor, the governor year also. And part of that year, I think we focused on international. Uh, that was kind of the main focus of the presidents that year. So is that what you saw? Is that what you spent most of your time with or some of your time with? There was a lot of uh, focus on international. I think that was taken at the International Convention in New Orleans, <laughs> where one of the wonderful things they have there is the House of Friendship where there may have been, oh, there might have been 200 booths <laughs> about projects True. in different countries uh, staffed by Rotarians from all over the world. So you actually get kind of a glimpse of what international is all about, even at the conventions, things like that. I did. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, I, I actually met someone there and then did a project that they were suggesting. Oh, really? Wow. Which country was that? Do you remember? Uh, that was a project um, having to do with vision. Uh, Vision Quest, and, and we did it actually with Thailand. With Thailand. Okay, great. Next picture I have is a picture of you with a banner exchange, I believe. This was in Mexico? Yes, this is at a club meeting in uh, Marilla, Mexico, um, I believe in 2012. And we're in this picture, we're exchanging banners. We have these little club banners, and part of the, um, the tradition is when you go to another Rotary Club meeting, you give them uh, the banner from your country and they give you one from their country. So at, at my club uh, in Camarillo, we have, uh, oh, we must have a hundred of these that, <laughs> that we cherish. 
Great, great. So that was in Mexico. The next picture um, was also that same trip. We had another team go down at that same time. It's called the uh, Safari, Project Safari, where groups of uh, Rotarians from here actually do hands-on projects in Mexico with our sister district. Next picture, um, this is the one I took. I, I love that picture, and that's uh, you, Max. One of your projects support, uh, I guess, points was doing lenses or yes, this is glasses? Yes, this is the Vision Quest project, <laughs> and we would purchase uh, the raw materials for this, this project. Uh, we could get a pair of glasses for less than 75 cents for wow. the plastic lenses and the wire, and then we give a kit to... Uh, Rotary Clubs, uh, we did this in Bangladesh and also in Thailand and Mexico um, where they will put these uh, glasses together and give them to needy people. Right. It's amazing uh, when you do these projects, how many people you give the glasses to that could never see before until they actually got that first set. Oh, I can tell this you stories about that. This, yeah. this, this particular one, we did it in a uh, senior center and there was a guard at the senior center who had a clipboard and we tried the first pair of glasses on him, and it was the first time he could really read the information that was on his clipboard that he used for work. It was, wow. it was, wow. it was uh, really wonderful. <laughs> that is amazing. I have some pictures I put into this uh, into the file of some of the group study exchange uh, that we had that came to here in California. The first picture is uh, a group that actually came in and visited Carpinteria City, Con City Hall, and that was back, I think it was, 2007, something like that. Another picture we have is a team that came in from Bangladesh. And this picture, we took them to all of the, you know, the, the great sites. This picture here was taken in the middle of the Mojave Desert. <laughs> was, uh, well, they're, they're from tropical areas, so we figured we'd show them what a desert really looked like. What was interesting about this team, this team was one of the teams that I contacted with, the team leader of the GSC. Uh, I contacted him eight years later, and we actually did a project with him with uh, Mitsubishi Chemical because Mitsubishi Chemical of Japan had no connections in Bangladesh, and they wanted to partner with the Rot Rotary Group. And so that's how that connection came about. So we still, quote, use our GSC team leaders uh, on and on again. So that was that one time. The team we then took him to was the bottom of the Mount Whitney. This, this is the Mount Whitney portal. We sent them up there just to see what it's like, different parts of the area. The next picture down with the flowers was a visit to a local nursery in Carpinteria where we had a team come in and actually showed them a uh, nursery operation. We had some people there that were involved with horticulture, so that picture with the uh, orchids was one of the places that they had visited. The other picture uh, showing up next is a picture of the Meristeming. They did apical meristems in this one nursery also where they actually incubate and propagate orchids. So that was that picture there. Picture we have next shows one of the outgoing teams uh, here in California, followed by a picture that we took again in Carpinteria of a GSE team that came in from Australia, visited uh, the local winery, I'm sorry, brewery. This is the island brewery in Carpinteria. And the hardcore Rotarians, we did all we could to try and accommodate them. This is at 7 o'clock in the morning we went through our tasting. <laughs> they, were, they were game and they were up to it. Did a great job of uh, sampling the brew, I would say. Picture here is of uh, the Sri Lankan team uh, that visited Carpentry also at that time. And then a picture that we have of a team. This photo actually was taken in Texas where I served as the president's representative. And the team here came in from uh, Zimbabwe. And what was fascinating about this team is that a year before that, we had actually sent a team into Zimbabwe. So that was uh, a fascinating point. Some of them, this team was all doctors. They actually um, re knew and were familiar with some of the people that were on that original team. A picture down below shows a team from Korea that came in in 2011, uh, actually visited Carpinteria. This team uh, was to do an exchange. We were planning on taking our team in there, but they were diverted into Africa instead. And so that team actually came into Carpinteria. With that, the next picture, Max, I'm gonna let you take over. This is part of your trip here. Well, this was uh, typical and sort of a highlight of our trip to our, our, our exchange to Thailand. This was taken uh, with the American Council in Chiang Mai, North Thailand. 
So that's, that's actually where our whole GSE exchange was. Mm -hmm. It was in the northern part of Thailand, not in Bangkok. We flew into Bangkok and then went north, but this is in front of the American embassy. Oh, okay. Great. Then the next picture you have shows, uh, what are those, umbrellas? These are umbrellas. <laughs> this, is, this is sort of an art shot. Uh, we went okay. to an umbrella factory okay. again. Lots of factories. What size are those umbrellas? They are probably two and a half foot diameter. Wow. And there's a lot of umbrellas there. We went through then. the whole operation and there was just a pile of, pile of them, sort of the glue was drying on them, I believe. Okay. okay. Now, was that part of the GSE, part of the, um, the trades portion of that? The well, it, not exactly. I think it was something we wanted to see. Okay. We wanted to purchase some umbrellas to take home and we also saw a uh, silk making factory, a oh, place okay. where they had all the, wow. the silk worms and they were weaving silk. So are these uh, silk umbrellas there that you show? Actually not, they're paper. They're paper. So with the different colors, did you bring one of each home? Uh, <laughs> quite a few. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I should have brought one today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. And the next picture you have? That's our uniform. We had uh, identical district shirts and this I believe was uh, before or after one of the many club meetings that we went to in Chiang Mai province. Okay, got it. And then your and the next picture? And the lower one is quite interesting because uh, this is my team again, um, consisting of, uh, well, in our other uniform, our light uniform, but this project, which is a, a, a water filtration uh, project in Thailand, um, was sponsored by the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara. Oh, wow. So they wanted to show it to us, and uh, the water in that area wasn't potable, so by going through filters, uh, they could provide potable water to this school, and then at night it was open to the village to come in and use the water. Great. Now, two of the members of that team actually are from Santa Barbara, right? They are. <laughs> we had Dana, by the way, on her show a, a while back. She did a great job for us. Yeah, Dana and, and Liz Werhain yeah. are uh, Rotarians now in Santa Barbara. Right, right. Then the next picture? This was one of the most fun evenings we had. Uh, each district, of course, has a district conference at some time of the year, and they want to schedule the GSE, the exchange, so that we can go to that. And they dressed us up in these uh, sort of native tribal uniforms or, or, or costumes and uh, clothing and they spent a lot of time on the women uh, with makeup and hair and then they put this turban on me and I, it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. Now did you bring any of that home with you? No, I just the picture. Yeah, just the picture, <laughs> okay. I guess you wouldn't use it too much out here in Southern California. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> okay. The next picture is one of our factory tours and this particular um, factory was a paper mill oh. and I believe there is <coughs> it's like a, a dye vat but they're doing something with uh, mulberry um, pulp, and I actually brought a sample here. Okay, um, which is, good. It's this small piece of paper here, but you can see how rough it is. It's a, a mulberry fiber, mulberry pulp paper that they make, and then they can mm. make it into these little books like this, <coughs> uh, which is uh, representative of one of the gifts that we oh. got. Ah, okay, nice, very nice. We have a picture here, I believe this is a view, Pat. I hope you could talk on this one. Uh, <laughs> we got you back here. I put this picture in. This was, uh, I believe, the governor that had <coughs> sent you on your trip. Uh, yeah. Frank Ortiz and his wife, Scotty. And uh, I'm glad you put this picture up because <laughs> Frank and Scotty watch this show all the time. So I wanted to make sure that we gave them uh, their fair share. Well, this is them at the Sri Lankan District Conference. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I've never known partiers like Sri Lankans, and they <laughs> threw this great party. Everybody had match, it had turbans of wild colors to wear. It was probably 95 degrees out in the dark, <laughs> uh, and just partying, dancing, drinking, eating like crazy. It was a fabulous, fabulous party. Great. It was great having them there with us. No, that was very nice. Now, did they get to spend uh, a lot of time with you or just a, a day no, or two? No, very briefly yeah. at the conference. Right, right. So you guys stay pretty busy in the meantime then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next picture you have here shows uh, 
maybe a, a family group? This is, and the gentleman in the middle with the orange shirt is one is the doctor from Sri Lanka that came with their group study oh, exchange, okay. and we had spent the day with him, and then he asked us to please come to his home and visit his family. Very nice. So we were all there visiting them. Yeah, yours was one of the fortunate groups that actually got to interact here and there, so that was kind of a nice one. Oftentimes it doesn't coordinate quite right. Well, you know what, actually meeting the Sri Lankan group study exchange team uh, at one of the meetings, and I was actually doing a, um, a makeup meeting at another club, and they were there, and I sat at their table and talked to them, and that's what kind of convinced <laughs> me to sign up to, for group study exchange Oh, that's later. great. Now, you're fortunate also because you were an alternate that got moved up into yeah. the position. Yeah, that was well, great. Congratulations to you on that. Um, next picture we have here shows, looks like a tea that sampling we, yeah, or something. Sri Lanka is no, Ceylon, and they are known for tea, and we did a lot of tea things. And this is one place that average people, not even Sri Lankans, can get into. And oh. it's where the they tea taste and decide what grade it is before it goes to the tea auctions. And we got a full lesson on how to tea. And we were, you know, slurping and spitting the tea, <laughs> just, you know, with the best of them, kind of okay. trying to decide how great it was. <laughs> and uh, the next picture, actually, the gentleman there um, on the far right talking, he is the premier tea taster in Sri Lanka, oh. giving us a lesson. Got it. That must be pretty difficult. I went once with my wife in, um, I think it was Nice, France, where they had perfume testing. Oh. Oh, it smells the same after a yeah, while. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I would not be one of those experts. I couldn't yeah. do it. <laughs> Next picture we have uh, looks like a picture of Elephants. Elephants, yeah. That was probably when we first got our itinerary. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to call my husband. We're going to an elephant orphanage. <laughs> and, you orphanage? Know, yeah, okay. and it was a huge place, but we literally wa drove down a cobbled street with shops all along the side, and at the end was a river, and they would walk the he elephants herd by herd, down to the river and let them play in the river for a little while, half an hour, an hour, before they herd them right back oh. up again. And it was like, oh, look, there's elephants in the river and <laughs> got to visit with them. Wow. Now, do they train them, uh, some of them, or they just kind of no, keep them, just no, herd them they, as wild? You know, there's a couple that seem to obviously are a little more rambunctious, so they're, they've got chains on. The rest of them are just kind of loosey-goosey. Oh, okay. Just walk your herd of elephants through town. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And the next picture you have there. Oh, the Foundation for Goodness. This was an amazing place to go to. These people do things and uh, for the kids, for the neighborhood. Um, they help train people to have a career, whether it is to be an electrician, to be a beautician, et cetera. They had all these different schools for all the locals to come in. They had places to teach the kids. Uh, they had somewhat of an orphanage going there. It was beautiful. And one of the amazing things, when they had the big tsunami in Sri Lanka, in this place, they kept the marker inside this building of where the water was. And I couldn't reach it, wow. putting my arm up. That's how high wow. the water was. So it's a technical trade school, more or less? Yes, but it is all it is all uh, goodness and volunteered. You don't come in and pay for anything. Nice. It is just to help the people. And that's great. Great. And then uh, the last picture you have here shows your team, if you want to go yeah. through the names, if you remember, of your team. Oh, I do, and definitely. Okay, great, great. Um, first, we have Liz, Elizabeth, and she was a journalist and former professional dancer. Okay. And she uh, had a great time. She danced at the dance schools with the kids. She actually was published uh, writing an article in wow. Sri Lanka the first week we were there. Uh, the gentleman in the dark blue shirt, that's Brandon, and he is a chiropractor from uh, San Luis Obispo. Um, next to him is Greg, and Greg has an uh, NGO called Give Running, and we brought duffel bags of tennis shoes, and he taught... Um, all these character traits for skills and success and ran with these kids and <laughs> we gave them all shoes. It was really, really a fun thing to do. And Levy is a paralegal 
that came with us and we did, we, he got, he and his attorney, one of the attorneys that was hosting him particularly, got us into uh, parliament there. Uh, we met with par parliamentarians. I mean, it was really fascinating to see their vocational things. I got to tag along with <laughs> all of them. Great, great. <coughs> now the GSC, um, four to five weeks, how long were you, in, were you there in Sri Lanka? 31 days. 31 days? Yeah. Okay. How about you, Max? It was like about three and a half weeks. About three and a half weeks. Okay. It was a little shorter for some reason. <laughs> now, um, most of that time, was that visiting the vocations, or did you get a chance to actually experience the culture, the people? It was both. We went to, um, uh, like, botanical gardens. Um, I think we went to a palace, uh, sort of a summer palace up in the mountains, the Queen's Palace. Um, one of the really fun things we did is we saw some elephants and we saw them working. We saw them pulling logs. It was sort of an exhibition um, where we could see them actually working and moving moving large object, objects with their trunks. So that was, the, and there was a, a, um, a veterinary hospital there also for elephants where they could lift the entire elephant and take care of it. So. It was sort of a rehab center for elephants. That was that was fun. There were a number of cultural activities. Great, like that. great. How much uh, focus would you say your team had as far as or exposure to Rotary itself uh, on these trips? Uh, a lot. Okay. Uh, I'd say we went to twenty to twenty-five club wow. meetings. Wow. Sometimes it would be two <laughs> uh, each day uh, for lunch and then for dinner, uh, maybe even a breakfast. A lot of exposure. They really. They valued us, they protected us, and they moved us around yeah. to try to get us to every club meeting in their district, I believe. Wow, that's, um, that's amazing. And we had a lot of exposure. Uh, my cheeks actually got tired from smiling <laughs> for photographs <laughs> because, I mean, you see these photographs and we would stand for these and then more and everybody sure. would want to uh, love us and um, not to mention singing karaoke. <laughs> How about you, Pat? Same thing with the we experience of Rotary? We had a lot, yeah. We had a lot. And the Sri Lankan um, Rotary meetings are so much more formal than ours. I was always sitting at the head table with the president on a stage, usually. Right, right. Um, I probably went into shock the first meeting when they handed me a microphone and said, here, sing your national anthem. <laughs> and I was like... Did oh they my really? God. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. And thank God for my team. They, they, I'm sure they read the panic on my face <laughs> and they all came, just got up and stood in front of me and started Perfect. singing it. And Perfect. I'm like, oh, thank you because I'm not a singer. <laughs> now, do you stay in touch with uh, the team that you took with you? A little bit, somewhat? A little bit. I, I know the highlights of their lives okay. since then. Okay, good. How about you, Max? Yeah, well, quite a bit with... Uh, Dana and Liz, uh, because they're Rotarians now, yeah. it, it's not required. Uh, the age limits are, uh, I believe it's less than 40 years old. Uh, we're trying to select non-Rotarians uh, in a certain age group uh, who will have potential for, for making peace with other countries and possibly becoming Rotarians, but it, it's not a requirement. Uh, but they came from the, actually from the UCSB in, Interact Club. Ro Rotaract, 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 Rotaract Club. Rotaract Club. Right, right. They did. Yeah. The adult exactly. Rotaract Club. Right, yeah. right. Now, unfortunately, the, the GSE kind of went away. It was uh, replaced, what you did, with, yeah. the, with the new one, which is now called Vocational Training Teams. Uh, the only structural change had to do with the way it was funded. When you guys went, uh, the advantage was Rotary um, Foundation had money set aside for these, these teams to go out. Vocational training teams now become part of a global grant process, so you actually have to fund it through global grants. Do you see that as an advantage, a disadvantage? It's, it makes it awkward, and it makes it a, an additional decision if, if we want to organize and plan and apply for that grant. So it makes it a little more difficult, but it's not a barrier. We could still do it. Good, good. And my thought is, it probably is a little tougher to do one now. Um, I think the idea of usually picking one career path, basically, or one industry to take over is a great thing. But GSE originally started in the 50s. 
there was no internet. You weren't phoning <laughs> other countries. Sure. So it was a great exchange of culture and what was going on, et cetera. Then I can see why we developed it into something a little bit different now. Do you think it's worth pursuing? In other words, keeping that forward? Because we haven't had a GSC, uh, group study exchange or a VTT, vocational training team, for a number of years now. Yeah, just I think I was the thing. last one. You were the last one. Yeah. <laughs> very, very true. To see that coming back, I think that would be one of those outstanding things. It may seem to be a place where Rotarians are missing out right yeah. now. Yeah, Brandon, who, was, who is our chiropractor that went, they had absolutely no chiropractors in Sri Lanka. They wow. didn't know what a chiropractor was. We would clear banquet tables and mm. Greg would be adjusting and cracking people and explaining, et cetera. I think, you know, take a medical chiropractor team or just a medical team in general right. to Sri Lanka would be a fabulous thing. That would be, I could see that. Uh, the one team we had uh, funded that year, our year was um, for developing challenged children. That, was again, oftentimes in Asia, especially that culture, it's overlooked. Actually, it's you don't see or hear anything about it. So there's a need there for that. If you were to go back to the areas that you went, what would be the first place you'd look at? Or what would you look for that impressed you of the areas you went to? Max, I'll start with you. Well, I just love Northern Thailand. Uh, it's, it's about 1,500 feet above sea level, so it's not quite as hot as Southern Thailand. And there's, um, it, you seem closer to the um, Thai culture when you get out of the big cities. And you see uh, Burmese uh, folk that come down as, as laborers. You see hill tribe villagers. <laughs> Max, I'm sorry, we were actually running out of time. My apologies for that. Uh, that was a fast 30 minutes, by the way. I hope you enjoyed that. With that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, GSEs, uh, group study exchanges, and the vocational training teams. Take a look at that. Fascinating. And that is where we develop our goodwill ambassadors. With that, thank you. We will see you next time.